What is going on, YouTube? This is Ass the Roots. So I'm going to review the debut album by hip-hop duo Twisted. Basically, this album came out in the summer of 1998, and it's called Most Tasteless. This album came out on Psychopathic Records, which is ICP's label, and was one of the bigger hit albums off that label around that time. Like, between, like, Amazing Jekyll Brothers and this project, those were two large albums that helped kind of very much manifest more of the Juggalo sound a lot more, because apparently... Like, some of the artists on, like, the Psychopathic Records label, besides ICP, just didn't do quite as well. But Twisted did, and they were definitely ones that manifested and basically stuck with Psychopathic Records for quite a while. They were some of the initial ones. Basically, I, I don't want to say wholesomely, like, Second Banana, but they were one of the larger kind of Psychopathic Records artists that kind of manifested out of the Juggalo fold and that type of stuff. And this is just kind of a hit project. Kind of one of those albums that continues to have popularity. I'd say Freak Show is another real good one. That's one that continues to resonate with me. Just some real Juggalo highlights. I wanted to start reviewing more Juggalo kind of highlight albums because it's been a great while since I reviewed like Amazing Jekyll Brothers and The Great Malenko and some of those particular projects. It's also been a while since I reviewed Twisted that much. I reviewed Mirror Mirror last year, but I want to review more by them. This is one I've kind of had on the back burner for a decent while. The thing about it is, me talking about there's two versions of this album of Most Tasteless. There's one that's like the OG version, and that's the version that's on Spotify. But I'm actually reviewing like the more national edition. I'm reviewing the one that was the reissue from 1999. And the reason why I'm reviewing that one is because it has a single. I feel like that's just an easier format to kind of mess with. Just because, I mean, I get the feeling that the OG version is a pretty solid version of that. But I would have to say I wanted something with a little bit more kind of... I wanted the version that had a little bit more gloss and a lot more kind of radio-ready type feel. And it just felt like the reissue, which was intended to sell more copies, kind of had that. I mean, it's kind of like what happened with 3-6 Mafia's Mystic Styles, where I feel like some of those original versions, I mean, they're very much in their uncut kind of form, but I kind of like having the radio polish on there and that type of stuff. So I'm going to review the 1999, the national version of Most Tasteless, but maybe eventually I'll review the original version at some point. But just to kind of say there was at least one single off this project, but once again, I just would have to say that ICP is on here, and like Dark Lotus is on here, which is another group I haven't reviewed in a while. I definitely want to get back to that. But this is just kind of a real kind of spook of an album. It just really feels like a complete littered with Halloween affiliation type feel towards it. This really has that kind of gothic and overall approximate kind of haunting feel overall. It's this definite one for like the autumn. There's a couple of winter songs in here too. It's just basically good for like the second half of the year. It's not quite as much of a summer album, but I would have to say it just has that haunting spook of a feel. A lot of good smoke songs. If you like to roll up weed and that type of stuff, there is some good stuff for that sort of concept. Not so much of a drinking album, but I would have to say even in that sort of context, it does kind of have some of those swash kind of songs as far as that kind of goes. Yeah, I would have to say this is just an overall stellar album. It's going to get a pretty rave score. I just kind of like the overall kind of low-key kind of vibes. But, I mean, this is kind of one that when I think of, like, national critic reviews, there are actually some critic reviews of this, and you can find reviews of it on YouTube and that type of stuff. But in terms of dislike, kind of, like, more kind of stuff that, like, Rolling Stone would do or folks like that or, like, Blender or those type magazines that would have reviewed stuff around that time or just folks with the more official kind of tangent. It feels like this is kind of, like, one of those albums that kind of blurs the lines between, like, national attention and more underground sense where ICP kind of blurred those lines back in the mid and late 90s. They definitely crossed over later, but they always kind of stuck in, like, the alternative rap kind of field. And Juggalo, in my opinion, is basically like a sub genre at this point but i would have to say that like twisted them being a protege and kind of apprentice of icp is more so in that kind of barely kind of makes national attention and gets like professional critic reviews kind of aspect and i think that's just kind of the concept but yeah you can definitely find some juggle reviews circulating on youtube and i wanted to kind of put my two cents in on this particular stuff because i do like twisted and have liked them for a while and they definitely have some excellent stuff so it's just an overall kind of gothic spook of an album. So to talk about the single on here, there's only one. For the most part, like I was saying, with that kind of relative national...
with the relative kind of quiet attention and this kind of blurring the lines type context of how they sometimes get attention, sometimes don't. They usually only drop about one single per project. So that's just kind of the thing with the single. And that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to review the national release, the reissue from 1999, is because it has a single on here that's a little bit more attentive as far as trying to find the most popular songs on here. So that single would be Rock the Dad. Yeah, Rock the Dead is very much like a haunted stroll kind of song. It just really feels like a kind of creepy song for strolling up the street. And just kind of in a more autumn sense. It's kind of where the trees are kind of looking either gold and purple and red. And that type of stuff are very scraggly in that sort of context. It's a very kind of leery and ghastly kind of song. This has a real kind of spook of a feel towards it. It's really kind of like, feels like Halloween time kind of just in that sort of spookish kind of context as far as that kind of goes. But it is the chorus... The chorus on this song is very similar to We Don't Die Off of Freak Show. I feel like that was the single. The chorus is very similar to We Don't Die Off of Freak Show. And that was kind of the single off of Freak Show. And I kind of like that they kind of had similar pitches. But this one's just kind of a more stark version of that. It's just kind of very much just like an outdoor kind of. Rock the Dead is this kind of a creepy kind of outdoor tune, just kind of marinating in the night kind of fanfare and evening kind of fanfare of just like local kind of settings. It's not quite a club song, not quite like a night venue and just kind of out and about just in terms of like the city life kind of tune. This really feels more local and kind of house party type vibes towards it, just kind of in a more just relaxed and local kind of context. Maybe you're smoking a blunt as you walk down the street, just stuff like that. It's real kind of haunted in that sort of sense, but it's just kind of like an overall highlight. I definitely like this as like a single from Twisted just because they could have went for like a flashier kind of vibe, but they just chose something really low key. That just kind of happens to be a thing. But so to talk about there's 12 songs on here minus the intro. There's 12 songs on here. And out of those 12 songs, I wound up. Re there's 12 songs on here minus the intro. And out of those 12 songs, I wound up recommending to you nine songs. That's kind of the concept. So I'll go ahead and list those nine songs. They would be Rock the Dead, Spin the Bottle, Secondhand Smoke, Blank. Die Motherfucker Die, How Does It Feel, Hound Dogs, First Day Out, and Renditions of Reality. So basically a nice highlight on here that kind of has like a pretty solid winter kind of feel is Renditions of Reality. This Renditions of Reality is like a solid winter song. This is a spook of a song overall. It's just very chilling and kind of grim and it's just a nice ruminating song. But I definitely see this as like a wintry kind of song where most of this album is kind of more autumn, kind of September, October early November kind of fanfare. I feel like this is kind of like one of those chilling ones that just kind of feels more sophisticated and ritzy in terms of like a winter sense when things are, when Halloween is over and it's not quite so much in like that kind of haunted house and kind of haunted kind of party fanfare. It's just kind of an after effect to some of that when the when the party's done and some of those contexts as far as that kind of goes. It's kind of a nice one for when the party's over and that type of stuff and you kind of have the afterthoughts and the aftermath of some of those moments, not just days later, but weeks and it, in some cases months later as far as that kind of goes. Just a nice winter song. I feel like Hound Dogs is a really nice one too. Probably one of the best beats on this album is Hound Dogs. This one just definitely has like an overcast kind of feel towards it. It's a very trippy song with like a nice autumn day kind of feel. This feels like a really cool kind of day. This is a typical kind of like October, mid-late October kind of feel towards it or late September, early November kind of feel. This is kind of one around that time for like a mid-late autumn kind of feel. Just a nice dark lotus track on here. and just has an overall nice dark kind of feel towards it. I just really like this really has like an effectual beat. This is just a powerful kind of overcast, kind of foggy kind of day, kind of trippy kind of song. Definitely like that one. Another one that's a pretty good highlight in terms of production, just an overall nice feel that probably could have been a decent second single. I mean, it's kind of a ravenous kind of topic. Uh, Die Motherfucker Die is kind of a profane kind of topic, but I definitely think that this one's a powerful enough song that it probably could have been a single if it had had a different song title or something like that. But it's just an overall nice highlight and... Die Motherfucker Die is like a nice tipsy kind of pub song. It's very swashed out. I feel like this is a great song to kind of, if you're going to a pub or like a bar or someplace like that where there'd be drinks and that type of stuff, this is a good song to kind of be slurred out a little bit too and kind of swashed out. It's also a pretty solid house party song. It's a great song. It's a great song for rolling up some sticky icky and that type of stuff. Definitely some good weed rolling type song just in that sort of sense where you're just kind of not paying attention, getting some blunts rolled, that sort of stuff as far as that kind of goes. It's a great song for those kind of vibes. It's kind of in a more mellow sense. So that's just an overall nice one. Very tipsy kind of song. 
First Day Out is another great one. This is a pretty, this is a storytelling song. I do like this one. It's pretty solid. It's like a groggy kind of cut. It just really has like a swampy kind of beat on here. It's just kind of a typical day, kind of a spookish kind of commute song. So it would be like Twisted is not one to really do like day commute. Twist is not really one to do day commute and makeshift kind of songs, but this is definitely one for the concept of if you just are having like a typical day, you cruise around, that type of stuff, this typical kind of stuff, this regular day kind of feels, this kind of a commute song in a more spookish sense. So it's about as close to like makeshift as really Twist is going to kind of get, despite the fact that it's about some cat that just got out of prison and that type of stuff. So this kind of the concept of this kind of being spookishly kind of commute and just kind of having a swampy kind of beat this is an overall kind of really kind of groggy kind of feeling of a song i just like the i really like the production on here it just really has that kind of blurred out kind of feel towards it bend the bottle is a pretty clever one this has icp on there to back them up and this is like a real slick song it has a it's kind of a gimmick song but i like the way it kind of turned out this is just kind of a haunted and distorted kind of feel towards it but it's really low key and has like some down low kind of feels about it. It's just an overall clever one. Definite one for like house party kind of vibes. There are some house party vibes on here. Like Rock the Dead is a nice one. Spin the Bottle is a nice one. I feel like Die Motherfucker Die is a nice one. And I would probably say like First Day Out could be a nice one too. Just kind of, I mean, that one's more on the go kind of song. But I do feel like some of these are just good renditions of like house party kind of tunes but they do twisted does actually have some of these this is good because there's not really club songs on here they're not really going out to the nightclub and stunting and flexing and that type of stuff there's not really kind of pull up songs and cruising out and really flexing in your car type songs either kind of speeding kind of songs and that sort of concept but there are just some good house party kind of tunes as far as that kind of goes just within that there are some good house party kind of tunes just for rolling up some blunts and kind of kicking back and Kind of having some good times watching like jackass kind of get, having some snacks some of those type of moments yeah there's just some overall good house party kind of moments on here i just would have to say some of these like rock the, some of these like rock the dead spin the bottle some of those type ones just really have some good kind of oriented type house party feels and just give it some extra kind of like uh real kind of finesse and just that sort of stuff so it's just good to kind of have that but Another one that's a really nice one is Secondhand Smoke. Secondhand Smoke is kind of a foggy song. It just really kind of feels real smoke. I mean, because this song is Secondhand Smoke, it just really kind of feels like a real fog-oriented and kind of groggy kind of song with like some synthy kind of vapored kind of feel about it. This is an overall kind of nice haunted house music kind of song. It's just a great toke song at that. And by toke, I mean like puffing blunts, that sort of stuff, puffing joints, puffing bongs, some of those type moments. It's a good toke song. It's in that sort of orientation. This great, like, it just really does have haunted house kind of feel towards it. This real good one for October, November, September, some of those type moments. Definitely one of the more blurry kind of songs on here where I feel like Rock the Dead is just kind of like an entry one. That's the most crafted for the single, but this is definitely one where you're kind of more at a, like, house party or just some of the overall smoke sessions. This is, I mean, I feel like, to rank these twisted songs is just to be able to rank like the house party kind of vibes where you have your entry ones or the DAP is just getting started in the acquaintancing and that type of stuff. And then you have the later house party moments where you're starting to bust out the liquor and the women start showing up and the weed starts getting rolled and that type of stuff. And then you have the sheer moments where the music's blasting, the food's here and all that type of stuff. So it's just kind of the orientation of getting some of those, but there's just enough house party moments on here that I kind of feel like secondhand smoke is definitely where the, 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 the smoke it just started being lit and that type of stuff. As far as it kind of goes or rock the dead, it's kind of more like an entry kind of, things getting started and spin the bottles, definitely a later at night kind of song as far as that kind of goes. Yeah, I would have to say another nice one is Blink. Blink is like a really nice creeping and ruminating kind of track. It has some nice chill. It's a smoke song with like a leery kind of mellow energy. This one just kind of has like a nice kind of belly and just kind of more flat and kind of relaxed kind of production. But I do like the concept of it. It's not quite as haunted and as creepy. It's not quite sheerly as haunted as like the rest of the album. It just has like kind of like a somewhat leery kind of vibe towards it but it's just real mellow and how it does it this is definitely one where you probably smoked a little bit and are just kind of feeling it and just kind of kicking back this one still kind of has more of like these still kind of have more house party vibes than actual night venue and kind of stepping out in backyard and outdoor kind of moments but these are just definitely a lot of this twisted album like i was saying this feels like a real kind of sheer house party just overall in terms of how some of that kind of goes so it's just kind of good to kind of get that 
then I would say like the last song to sit here and talk, the last song to kind of talk about here would be How Does It Feel? Yeah, I would say How Does It Feel is kind of an outdoor song. This is one that's not quite as much house party like, but this is definitely one for like graveyard strolling and just music like that. Very dusky and doom like, very doom like music. And it just kind of feels freakish overall. This is definitely one that this is kind of another kind of stroll song like Rock the Dead, but just kind of in a more graveyard, kind of more haunted kind of sense. De definitely one for like the autumn, September, October, where the trees are kind of more scraggly and some of those type moments. So these are some great moments for kind of stepping out in some of that sense. So just to cover like some ones for like the more outdoor kind of feel like. So to cover some of these songs that are more outdoor like, I feel like Rock the Dead and How Does It Feel kind of have that more outdoor kind of feel towards it. And like Hound Dogs is kind of outdoor that can be, but that's just kind of more on the go and just kind of a more really that Hound Dogs is just kind of a more, yeah, I would say Hound Dogs is kind of an outdoor track too, but it's just kind of more on the go in that sort of sense. And then I would say like First Day Out is more on the go. Renditions of Reality is just kind of a more kind of ruminating type songs so that can be either way. So there's just some good ones on here, but there are some house party songs like Spin the Bottle, Secondhand Smoke, Blink and die motherfucker die that do kind of have that concept so it's just kind of a mixture of getting all these different types of styles but i do like the concept that it just feels really local i mean this is not like new york city kind of boston philadelphia some of those type places like big city kind of vibes chicago some of those type places where there's going to be lots of concrete jungle type stuff and some of those type moments i feel like this is a lot more local just kind of more in towns and just kind of residential areas where you just can have more spots to smoke in your backyard and kind of have like some nice velvety couches to kind of kick back and get drunk and that sort of stuff this as far as that kind of goes this is good but talk about the songs i didn't enjoy which should just be three of them on here which is just 85 bucks an hour what the fuck and bury me alive like 85 bucks an hour i didn't enjoy that much just because i didn't really like the beat this is kind of a classic 80s song that it samples on here i just didn't really think that the beat suited a creepy spook show like twisted or icp they're both kind of on this song this didn't suit them at all it's just kind of an abstract and kind of awkward one what the fuck was kind of another slurred one this is kind of one that was on the og edition i just didn't like this one at all this was a real kind of slurred and bland kind of beat. This, this The focus on this song was not strong enough for that one, I just kind of think. And the focus on that one just didn't have enough effectualness, wasn't quite strong enough in my opinion. And then Bury Me Alive just kind of had like a sporadic beat. And it was just kind of an awkward tempo and focus. That one was just kind of all over the place. And this was kind of a mismatch. And this did a lot of things at once that just covered too much territory and just didn't pull it off as well as it needed to. That just kind of happens to be a thing. But me liking nine songs out of 12 on here, I'm going to go ahead and give this album a 10 out of 10. Because it's really effectual, really nailed it. I like the house party vibes real well. And I just kind of like their kind of murky and this low key kind of sludgy kind of attitude towards step out and just kind of the real relaxed renditions of some of that i feel like songs like hound dogs renditions of reality die motherfucker die are just really kind of creeping and just kind of awkwardly kind of sluggish but in a good way kind of songs as far as stepping out and just kind of the lays kind of stone kind of mentality of some of that stuff and this overcast kind of feeling this really makes it for like some real masterful kind of works as far as kind of doing that plus i like the single real well i feel like rock the dead is just a real kind of haunted stroll kind of feel towards it this i like the leeriness of that one it's kind of like uh another is like a second rendition of we don't die and that was a pretty great song so that's just good concepts for how that kind of happens so, so those are just some great moments there so it gets a 10 out of 10 i would almost say i would like another single if i had to choose like i said i would probably say it would be die motherfucker die that's the best one if it could just have a less profane song title that would be a great one to kind of have it be a follow-up it's just too bad that twisted just doesn't get more recognition as far as they did i mean they started too later definitely as they progressed they finally did start charting but this is just back in the day when they were just super low key and stuff and it's just the highlight this is a classic album and a classic juggalo album at that so it's definitely the thing the social score i will give the social score like a nine out of ten just because it only had one single and these are popular songs i don't know the degree as to, i don't know the degree as to how popular they are with the juggalo fold but i feel like there's enough highlights on here but in terms of like recognition in terms of like the social kind of highlights from what i gathered from it i'd have to say that it does have the hits but it's just not very kind of broadcasted and promoted well so i think apart from rock the dead and the fact that there's two editions some people like the og edition more some people like the national edition i preferred the national edition but just to kind of say 
it just kind of needed more kind of social hits because that's always been the thing about twisted is it's just difficult to figure out what songs the folks are kind of messing with in terms of that so this is kind of the thing but nine social in terms of the future like twisted the last album i recall them dropping was in late 2021 which is called like unlikely prescription but they drop often they do have quite a few albums i'm gonna have to check out but we'll definitely get to some more of these but this is pretty much a classic and a classic juggalo album